All right, just wanted to take a moment <clears throat> to clarify, because I already had somebody ask me this question. These are the weights that are replaced here. You just push the factory ones out, push these new ones in. When this thing spins, these weights move out. There's a ramp right here. Let's see if I can get a better. Okay, all these sit in a ramp. They come up and down. These flat surfaces meet right here. Right on there. So with all these in and this flap, this is how this came off. I took note um, the other day when I had this part. It sits down just like that. If you've got this thing sideways like this and try to put it together, it will almost will not go together. And if it does, it'll crack one of those things. And then this is your new spring. And uh, I already had, like I said, I had questions about this. It was right here. Um, didn't quite have everything apart. Figured I would go ahead and, and kind of do a, a, a once over here. <coughs> so this is what everything looks like. You can use a bolt to take this out, but you really don't have to have this off for this kit, for the kit that I'm installing today. There's a bolt up there, bolt goes in here. This is the side trim. Is there um, one goes down here in the bottom and then there's two clips one two and the the trick here is there is a hidden bolt you saw it earlier it's right here it's the last one I take out and it's the first one I put back now while you've got this apart This bearing right here, every side by side, for the most part, that has a system like this, has this bearing. This one moves free in both directions. Some of the other ones have a sprag and they only move in one direction. And some of them have the wrong one in it. It's supposed to be freewheeling and it's not. Now, this goes just like that. When you put this back on, get your uh, your nut ready. Now this nut is left hand threaded. So when you take it off, you spin it to the right to take it off and spin it to the left to put it on. This belt here is gonna be in the way. It needs to be down so it'll stick out further around the circumference of this plate in order to give us some more room. That's why there is a bolt started right here. You can see it started there. It's got a little bit of grease in it. That's how I take them apart. This is just a long M6 or six metric, six millimeter bolt. But now, right now, this belt is jammed in there pretty good. So I may not need to use it, but if you do like I do and you start it in there, make sure that when you put this thing back together, this bolt is out. Last thing we want is it to loosen up and be dinking around in there. Up, up here, you can kind of see my mark I made when I had this part the other day. And I'm sorry about knocking around this camera. This thing is tight in here. See how that slides on. If you have to use more force than just two hands, something is wrong. You've got the uh, pucks backwards, or not the pucks, but yeah, the little, the sliders are in backwards or something. Now I know that uh, on the, you can see a little arrow, it's stamped LH. 
I know that in the video he said put the skinny part down. It, it actually means the curved part. There's a flat machine side and one that's kind of curved. The kind of curved part goes down into this basket here, this fat. And then this hub that goes in it has the flat machined pieces going up into it. So that's hand tight, it's on. You will experience some weirdness when you first fire this up because the belt is kind of forced as, as we push this in, the belt's gonna be a little bit pinched. That's okay. That's what we want. And we want, this should be able to sort of move a little bit as it goes. Um, when it first starts running, there shouldn't be any tension here. Now, part of that's because this belt is in this groove so deep because it was running before we took it apart. But we'll go ahead and tighten this by spinning it to the left. Some of you don't know what spinning it to the left means. I'll show you. This is a 32 millimeter socket. This is to the left. If you take a siding on the top there, if it goes down to the left, whoop, that's your normal loosen. That's a left hand rotation. You take a sighting along here, like if you marked a point, and it spins to the right. Whoop. That is a right hand rotation. This is a left hand tighten. Now the other cool thing to mention here is that part of the way through, this thing catches. Now, this is not your overall thread. This is a thread so you can use this to pull it out. But if you just run an impact in like this, at this stage, when this is stuck, and you can see it's stuck pretty far out. If you do that and run this in, when it clears these threads, goes through an air gap and hits the next threads, it will almost certainly bind and cross thread. And then you'll have to call idiots like me to fix it. So I just take this and real gently. I usually turn these in by hand, but this works. So we'll pass the initial set of threads into the air gap, and now we're gonna start it real careful into the next set. This is a uh, 18 millimeter. Again, left hand thread. <clears throat> now this, I had this off to check everything uh, the other day. That's why there was a little bit of grease there. I lubricate these if I have to use them. You can use just a smidge of grease or just a touch of oil. You don't want any oil or grease to get onto the belt or these machine surfaces here and there. None of that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is in the video, it clearly states that this is a 35 millimeter. Uh, as you can see, this is a snap-on socket. It's a very expensive socket. You can kind of see it says 35 in the glare there. You can see I wrote 35 on it because I store my sockets sitting up so I can see it. It says it's 35. I can almost sort of get a 35 on it. However, My big old fat 36 millimeter fits on that thing like a glove. And I used a swivel adapter because I have a big honking impact that I run in there. And that allows me to get my impact on the back side of this support and angle this just a little bit and get that out. Now these have standard right hand threads. So not a big deal there. <clears throat> now when this thing goes back together, I know everybody likes the time lapse. Um, 
when this thing goes back together, one of the things you need to keep in mind, especially besides this lower bolt, which is down here, is the clutch cover. <coughs> when clutch covers have been exposed to grease or oil, this seal sort of grows and inflates and becomes real soft. And when it does, it rolls. You're gonna to wanna to try and take some brake clean or some rubbing alcohol and soak this or put it in the boiling water for just a little bit to get any oils out of it or better yet, just order a new one if yours is compromised because this keeps dust and water out of there. And if that gets wet, not only will your belt usually slip, but you'll have other issues that you'll have to come take it to a mechanic for, like, I don't know, burning up the clutch because it's slipping. I know that this isn't a traditional style clutch, but you'll have issues. Those bearings and stuff are not meant to get wet. And there are and these are all the bolts right here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of these, if you have not pulled out nine, you have not pulled out enough on this machine. These are steel bolts. They go into an aluminum housing. That's important because steel is much harder than aluminum. And even though this is a really new machine with a bunch of miles on it, into place to start you gotta start them by hand because any variance in that hole that allows this thing to start sideways it'll start it'll hang there if you're not careful and uh, it'll cross thread in there and that lets in potentially more dust okay um, oh the other thing that one of the bolts is back here One's here, and one's up behind this wiring connector, which has a dust cover on it. The rest of me just follow around. So we'll go back to the time lapse now.